Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be giving you tips to ask quantitative reasoning questions. Quantitative reasoning questions are those questions you are seeing currently on the screen. No doubt many students find approaching this kind of question difficult. Especially those in primary school, the basic school, they age to see these kind of questions or they age to do this kind of subject. Even many teachers, especially those without STEM background, don't have background in mathematics and many other STEM-related subjects, they would rather ask their colleagues to take this kind of subject with their students. So I can still recall when I was teaching in primary school, I know some of my colleagues would jokingly say, oh, Mr. Lukman, how am I in a quantitative role? Many of your students now have quantitative reasoning, come and teach them. What of parents? Some parents hate to see these kind of questions as an assignment from their kids. Well, finding it difficult to approach this kind of subject or this kind of questions is not a big deal. And that does not make you, your student, even your kids, that does not make them dull students. This is because you are not the one who posed the challenge. Okay, let me give you an example. Suppose I just keep a key, or let me say I keep a pen inside a three-bedroom flat, and I now ask you as my friend, oh, who can find the key for me? You know, it might even take you 30 minutes before you can locate where the key is. You'll be thinking, am I going to check the toilet, the dining room, the kitchen, even inside the fridge? Because you don't know where I keep it. Will you check under the bed? Oh, that is there is very difficult and that's why we never welcome such a challenge from any people for example during my university days when we used to screen those fine for i mean our association post like that is mathematics student association club so you know some people used to give quantitative questions to those fine for that post which i used to object for example, there was a day when one of our colleagues gave this kind of question. I say, okay, can you prove that 7 divided by 5 is equal to 2? <laughs> it is very funny, yeah. 7 divided by, five is equal, divided by 5 is equal to 2. Actually, I objected it that day. Because how you say 7 divided by 5 is equal to 2? You are the one who cracked the challenge. It might be difficult for that person, I mean, to know the rule with which you use to what? To crack the challenge and if somebody does not know how to prove this kind of question that does not mean the person is dull or so and you know what the guy was saying that day so he said okay now uh, seven divided by five you know seven in roman numeral is v one one and five is v so then v we cancel v so that is very wrong and it is not generally allowed so you can't call this a principle so but the good news is that there are tips to approach some of these questions and i will try and summarize them in two tips in this video so sit down relax take your pen call your students or your kids to follow me to the end of this what to the end of this video okay now if you want to solve this kind of question the first thing is that i will try and look for that shape i will study the shape critically i will look it very well as well as the direction so the shape is going. For example, if you look at the sample one, or I mean like the sample B, this is my shape. My shape is triangular in nature, and you will see that the direction is following down here. I hope you understand now. So if you look at the sample C, so you will see that the shape is what is zigzag in nature, and the direction, the arrow is following this kind of direction. So you see from here, down here and down here. I hope you understand now. So first end is to study that kind of what? The shape. You study the shape and see whether it's going into one direction. So if it is going to one direction, try and locate that direction. That's the first thing to do. Then the second thing to do is now think of any of the arithmetic rule that you can use I mean, to see whether it's going to fulfill all the examples you were given. Because one of these I mean, mistakes some students used to make is that, okay, now, immediately they try and uh, check it with one of the examples. 
immediately they see it holds, they don't check it with other examples. You have to be aware of the distractor. What do I mean by distractor? Distractor as such, I mean, uh, answers or used by an examiner to distract students. For example, I may just give you an example. I may just give you a question. And I know maybe some students used to, I mean, uh, make mistake in, in that kind of question. I hope you understand. Just like if I say, okay, three multiplied by three. You know, three multiplied by three is nine. But many students might think three multiplied by three is six. Because of the exam tension, they may think it is six. So some examiner now put option six at the first option so that the students will not click on that portion and make mistake. So that is called, or that is known as a, a distractor. So you have to be of distractor. So in essence, if you have a rule, so you must ensure the rule satisfies all the examples you were given. In many cases, three examples. I hope you understand now. So, okay, look at the one we are looking at the chalk, on the chalkboard. The first thing is to study, I mean, the shape with which it comes with. So, and check the direction where it is going. If I were you now, check this first. You know, this is the shape. It means this and this guy, they are related with this guy. And this arrow is showing that all these three numbers, two, three, and six, produces this number. I hope you understand now. And like I've said, the second tip will be to what? think of any arithmetic rule, being it addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. You are going to use or you are going to combine one, two, or three of them together to produce, I mean, the result. I hope you understand. Now, if I were you now, look at this guy. You know, I can say 2 multiplied by 3. You know, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. Then I can still say 6 minus 6 we give 0. But I said you have to take note of the distractor. Because if you say 2 times 3, which is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, it might not work for the second one. I hope you understand now. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah. Look at this second one. Now, 6 times 4 is 24. And 24 minus 12 will give me 12. I think that holds for that as well. But you must not stop there. Go to the third one and test whether the rule holds there as well. So what is 1 multiplied by 20? That is 20. 20 minus 15 will give me 5. I hope you understand now. So that is that. You will see that the rule holds for all the example you were given. There, you are good to go to apply that rule into, I mean, the, the scenario with which we are given as an exercise. But before I go look at this, suppose a student A, think of this example, 2 times 3, 6. Yeah, is correct. And now say 6, I mean, uh, minus 2 times 3 again, which is 0. That does not make sense. It might hold for this one, but it might not hold for the rest of them. Okay, now since we know this rule, let us now apply it to... I mean, uh, this question, question four. I mean, this is common trans question for 2022. Okay, now if, I, if I'm to do it, don't forget the rule is two times three, that is six. And six minus what you have inside this triangle will produce the result here. That is the product of these two numbers minus the difference between the product of these two numbers and this guy will produce the number downstairs here. So then 60, 10 times 6 here will give me 60. Then what are you going to subtract from 60 to give you 20? I think that is 40. So it means you are going to have 40 here. So you have 40 here. That is 10 times 6 will give you 60. 60 minus 40 will give me, I mean, a 20. Okay, look at this guy as well. I have this here. Then that's telling us that, okay, now if I subtract, what I have here, if I subtract 100 from it, I'm going to have what? I'm going to have 25. You understand now? So what you have here, you know the rule is that multiply these two guys together, subtract this guy from it, and you are going to produce this guy. Okay, now, it's just like these use the same example. So you have this kind of question. What am I going to subtract 100 from that will produce 25? That is 125. And what are you now going to multiply by 5 to give you 125. I think that is 25. I hope you'll understand. And then 25 multiplied by 5 will give me 125. And 125 minus 100 will produce 25. I hope you understand now. Okay, now let us move to the 
Next example, example C. Look at this kind of question again. Don't forget, you don't need to stress yourself. The first thing is to check the what? The shape, as well as the direction the shape is moving. If I were you, you should think that, okay, now, this guy and this guy is related because of the arrow. Likewise, this guy and this guy is also related because of the arrow, and both produces this guy inside the square. I hope you understand now. Then you now think of any of the arithmetic rules, be it addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or the combination of one, two, or three of these arithmetic operators, so and see whether it's going to produce this. Look at this now. I can say 4 plus 2, that is 6. 6 plus 10 will produce 16. But you must not stop there. You have to ensure that the rule actually holds for the remaining examples. Okay, 8 plus 5, that is 13. 13 plus 25 will give me 38. Uh -huh. Okay, look, what of this one? 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 12 will give me what? Will give me 22. So, since you've established this rule, you now apply it to the rest of the situation. Okay, now let us do this guy. So we have 8 plus 2, that will give me what? That is 10. 10 plus 26, that will produce 36. Again, if you want to store up this kind of question, first thing to do is to what? Is to check the what? The shape with which the challenge comes from and check whether it has a direction. That direction shows, I mean, the rule at times, immediately you've established the shape as well as the direction is going. The second thing is to think of any of the arithmetic rule, being it addition, subtraction, multiplication, or combination of two or three of them, and see whether you are going to put them together to produce the result. And one thing you have to note is that if you are doing that, you have to ensure that the rules you are taking O's for all the examples you were given before you go to the question. I will see you in the next video. But before I end this video, if you've not subscribed to my channel before, please don't forget to do so. Thank you.